Ken's jogging back. All right, Ken's back. Thank you, right. Ken. Sorry, guys. No, you're fine. We've got Ken in the quarantine special guest zone. Yes. Can't tell there. Trying to give him space. I've got uh, tape right. here, so I'll remember to stay, you know, a few feet away from him. But he's pretty safe anyway. We, we hand sanitize just before yes. each of us. Not at the same time, not on yeah. everybody else's hands, but separately. Yes. Washed our hands because, uh, as Ken will tell you, that's the most important thing we could do right Ken's now. Ken's the mayor of Burleson. That's where we're at. Uh, we're so honored to have Ken. We've known Ken for, um, shoot, 20 years? How long? Long time. Long time. How long have you been mayor, Ken? Hmm. 17 years, I think. Not long enough, that's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> but he's made remarkable changes, and our no. city is now booming. Tell him how you and I met, Cameron. Uh, so, Ken, you know, as he's the mayor, he, he knows an awful lot about the government and how that works and everything. So, uh, I was going to Hill College over in, that well, Old Town, yeah. Old Town, Burleson, because they have a little campus inside of... Uh, is it still an active church or is it? it was. Um, no, I think they just they let the there's a church that uses the sanctuary on the weekends. That's what it is. Yeah. Anyhow, he used to be the uh, main. I forget was it U.S. U.S. government or what? So was I taught. The, well, I what taught. Was the class? I taught two classes. I okay. taught uh, national government and then state and local government. Too. Okay, I was yeah. I was in national. Yeah. I don't know. It was one of the government classes, and he was a great teacher. And since he's the mayor, that makes sense. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. You know, it totally. You know, it's a little tiny town thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. One of the one of the most beautiful things about being in a small town is you can happen upon a class and then the mayor getting, is teaching. Getting you know? taught by yeah. government. Yeah, and that <laughs> was cool. Taught, taught government by your mayor. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. No, he was, he was a great was teacher. Fun. Yeah, that is I didn't is make cool. any movies for it, unfortunately. I, I should yeah. have. Cameron's educational history is that in high school he didn't do well on testing and following grades, so he or would homework. make a or movie for the teacher and then he would get off without having the, you know, he'd get a little yeah. special treat. I think he did fine in my class, Did, didn't have yeah. to have any special Well, you made it so easy. Yeah, yeah he loves that. his government stuff yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been following it forever. Yeah. Um, and then since then, uh, I mean, obviously I've been following your career yeah. as a Burlesonite since ages. All right. Um, I live here now again, so I'm glad to be back. Yeah, we've done some fun video projects. Yeah, we've done yeah. some good stuff. Uh, I got to film like debates and town yeah. halls and all that kind of jazz. Anyway, uh, yeah. So I don't know who all is there. Uh, would you, our stream got interrupted. So the link that I had shared, it, I should probably go share that. Hold on, y'all, y'all chibber chapper. I'm going to share the link. Okay, I'll to talk to Ken. People. Well, you, now Ken, tell me yeah. about your day job. You're the mayor of Burleson, but I know it's not a high paying yeah. gig. No, uh, you well, do it so, for the love of the city. Yeah, our, our for for being mayor, we get uh, actually everybody on the city council gets $120 a year. Nice. At at max, we get paid Excellent. five bucks a meeting. So yeah, so we're worried. You know, we're worried that we may have to cancel council meetings now. Right. And lose our five bucks. Well, oh yeah, yeah that could, yeah, be, no. it could yeah. be a downfall. Yeah, you no. better you run to the bank. Lunch and and chicken yeah. Express for that. Yeah, so my day job is I am president of an organization called One Safe Place, which is a crime and violence prevention agency. And uh, among other things, we operate what's called a family justice center, where we serve victims of domestic violence and children who witness violence in the home. No, that's over in Fort Worth, right? It's in, yeah, it's in Fort Worth at the corner of Hemp Hill and Rosedale Streets, right yeah. in the hospital district. And it's fantastic. And you work with police services, and yeah, uh, we got we've got all of the family violence unit for the city of Fort Worth is in our building, along with a couple of other units. And but yeah, we work with the shelter, with the uh, police department, with uh, lawyers who do civil legal services, with the district attorney. Uh, lots of therapists working on site with us. So, That's awesome. Yeah. They do incredible work. They do incredible yeah. work. We've actually picked up the phone and had a couple people in crisis and called Ken and uh, got a few things straightened out. You just can't believe how much it, how great it is to have people around that dedicate their whole lives to this. This is Ken Shedder, uh -huh. and he's also our mayor, which is so cool because this is you really. I, I know Kelly Clarkson is from this little town, but this is the guy here who ah. made it what it is. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, little country town, but he's bringing in a lot of new projects, a lot of business projects, because this mayor uh, is, is independent. He, he doesn't really take sides, but he encourages business. 
whatever people want to do good stuff you know that's yeah. how I see you anyway I appreciate that uh, well you give me too much credit we got lots of uh, amazing people that work for the city and you know everybody on the city council has been on the same page for a long time before me Byron Black was a great mayor who brought us a That's long true, way. Absolutely. And then we have amazing citizens that are doing cool things. Oh, like, yeah. uh, you know, your, we have your art projects all over the city. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, people love, uh, one of the things people love about Burleson is we have cool cool murals, especially in Old Town. And Well, uh, when you live in a place, we've lived here about 28 years. So uh, when you've lived in a place for 28 years and you've tried to survive as an artist, you work for almost every business that comes to town. Yeah, not be, they just call you and say, "Hey, can can you do a mural for me about my business?" So it's right. been kind of cool. So as you go through town, there's about 28 years of murals in the grocery store, up at City Market. Yeah. it's so fun to drive around and see them all over town. Because right. to me, they're slices of t time and work and right. everything. I don't know what they are to you because I I never talk to anybody. Uh, same about thing. It. Same thing. Yeah. yeah, and it's. Uh, you know, and you have such a really cool nostalgic vintage style that uh, it, uh, for me, one of the things that it just sort of reminds me, gives me a sense of Burleson when I was a kid. Kind of, oh, yeah. Which yeah. is, and your work, some of it is a, of an age sort of before that. Yeah, but right. when I was a kid, Burleson still, you know, had some right. of those elements too. Right. So, yeah. Well, absolutely. That's why actually we moved here because Cameron was a little kid. We had uh, just been working in Deep Ellum over in Dallas. I don't know if you remember that when that all got started. Yeah. Yeah. And we did a bunch of murals over there. And my wife, Randy, uh, said, let's move near my dad. And nice. he lived in Burleson. Very cool. So we thought, man, you know, this is kind of cool. We have all these cool old buildings in Old Town. Yeah. They were vacant and cheap, I'm telling yeah. you, because they hadn't thought about how when we were in Deep Ellum, we just started painting and musicians started playing in these old buildings and having parties and then it, it became a scene yeah and so we were able to do murals on all the buildings and then the city got behind it and, it, and that's actually what's happened now in Burleson right right uh, so we knew that that could happen I just wanted to see if it could happen out in the country yeah. so that he could have a normal childhood yeah and uh, I at the time I was working nationally so I could stay here and just travel you right know? So uh, that's how we moved to Burleson, and you know, at first they had no idea what a mural even was, because right. in Texas, I don't know why, but there's only a few select towns that have murals. Right. And you remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Growing up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, and now it's a much bigger thing, really. Well, what's going. funny is Burleson kind of set the standard. Now he's getting calls from Joshua and Cleburne, especially Cleburne, yeah. and all sorts of people. They're like, well, "We want to do what 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 they did in Old Town Burleson, mm -hmm. where we well, have murals we and art like everywhere, because, and it's uh, really cool." I don't know why every city doesn't do that with yeah. their old buildings. There's got to be a one or two artists that if yeah. you let them work for 28 years, they're yeah, gonna figure yeah. out how to paint. Yeah. If they start out with some natural skills, that's the main thing. Well, now something I've learned is uh, not. From my own experience but um we at work and once i place we have an art program oh uh, yeah for kids yeah uh, so we explore all kinds of different uh avenues to, to that's get right. those that's right. out. but one of the things we've learned over the years is um a, a muralist being a muralist is sort of a special skill it's not mm -hmm. like it's not like you just it's painters that paint and they just do it on a bigger scale i mean it's yeah. a special there's, there's extra yeah. well, things yeah. it's yeah. a lot of practice and it's physical people don't realize that yeah. uh how much work it goes into doing a giant wall on a building. Think about, right. I can probably paint a thousand brush strokes a day. Y'all don't be surprised if by the end of this stream, he, he he's, he's, he's like this. Yeah, my back will go out at some point. But what I wanted right. to try to do is maybe, everybody's panicking, so I want to give people an escape. We just have fun over at my studio every day, no matter uh, what's going out in the world. I'm kind of go check the TV every once in a while, but mostly I'm over here listening to music and uh, every once in a while, the mayor will stop by because we do work together yeah. once in a while. So we had one of the coolest projects together, and that's, that's and you do so many projects, you probably barely remember it. But when we were uh, at Wednesday Place, when we were building the Family Justice Center, which was about uh, almost ten years ago now, but we started off, we bought this big building that had to be completely renovated, and yeah. we couldn't occupy the building, so we put these eight uh, trailers, temporary trailers, in the parking lot of the building where we started serving victims out of domestic violence. That's well, right. because of the nature of the work we were doing, we had to work really hard to secure those eight buildings and to make them safe 
for the people that we were serving. And private. And private. Yeah. And also yeah. separate us from uh, this giant construction site right. we had going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. we were, you know, re completely renovating a 65,000 square foot building. So anyway, we hired uh, Brad to build, uh, to paint a giant mural. So we put up an eight foot plywood fence that yeah. really covered an entire city block. Yeah. Um, yeah eight foot tall. Big, yeah, eight, eight foot tall. Who eight even foot knows tall. how long? It was like 600 feet long. I mean, it was, yeah, yeah it, it was, was maybe a thousand feet It was long. amazing. It wasn't a thousand. And he gave and, uh, me three uh, days to paint it. Nah, so that that's not challenge. true. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Now, he so actually I, put painting clothes on. I did. Well, so we have a theory at one safe place that uh, we think every that we we want to have a lot of sweat equity and things, and we want everybody in yeah. the organization at every level to be directly connected to the work we do. So That's during awesome. that time, uh, you know, we spent time doing some of the actual work around uh, you know getting our facilities ready and things. And so yeah, but I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, one day it was out, it was and it was the middle of the summer. It yeah, was hotter hot. than hell. Oh, yes. And uh, I was out there with the paintbrush on that fence. Yes, you were. And a guy uh, came up to me and said, I'm looking for the guy in charge of this place. And I said, well, that's me, oddly enough. He's out there in paint clothes. Yeah. That and anyway, awesome. it was a guy that wanted to talk to us about doing, uh, uh, this could get too long. But anyway, yeah, right. that no, conversation no, led we're, to We're here till midnight or yeah, something. Yeah, led to us so applying, <laughs> applying for... Uh, uh, new market tax credits, which is a special program when you do big developments in, in certain uh, places. And uh, anyway, that netted us about three million dollars. Whoa! The yeah. Whoa! Nice. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Wow! Yeah, it's excellent. It, but it, first, my question, first impressions. My yeah. question. Yeah, first impressions. My <laughs> question is, why do you walk up to you instead of me? I well, I <laughs> was my hat wrong. I actually, I, wrong? I actually think he had gone into the building and oh, okay. uh, asked oh, for me, and they said he's. He's out there painting on the, the young one with the paint on. And I he just covered guessed. with that yeah. much paint. I do look like a guy, well, a homeless guy that might have gotten hired. In fact, we yeah. did hire some couple of homeless guys. Yeah, to we did on that project. That yeah, project. but people still. I didn't realize yeah. how many homeless people are actual artists. I'm yeah. not even kidding you. Yeah. All day long, artists. Cause they can, they don't function in the society. They don't yeah. have a beautiful wife like I had, and yeah. uh, you know it's. Uh, it's it, so they end up on the street. It's really yeah. a sad kind of thing. So we, I give them Gatorade. They paint for half an hour as long as they've got. So if you're not already bummed out about the coronavirus, listen to us tell you the woes of the homeless mm -hmm. culture. The homeless no, virus. I'm the sorry about side. that. But I'm just saying, there's a lot of artists out yeah. there. So I always say, getting back to the main point of this, is that every town has artists, yeah. but they don't know where to work. Uh, they're horribly ADD often. Uh, but they have a passion, and if somebody would give them some money once in a while to paint a project on the wall, if you have a restaurant or if you have like a soda fountain, that's what I how I started a working. Soda fountain. That's what we, they used to call it. Yeah. My mom yeah. would say, "Go down to the soda fountain, see if they need a painting on the wall. It's a restaurant." Yeah. So I'd go down there. They'd hire me. I'd work for a week on it. I'd get free food for two weeks and a hundred bucks, and that was a lot of money. So yeah, even uh, if we, even. That's how that all began. Even so I would get a malt shop. We just yeah. have a soda fountain, but we should. No, there we should was. Look into yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We should look into That's that. what she used to call. She's, she's from yeah. a different era, era, and she's here watching. So cool. Uh, but anyway, and I hope she stayed home and didn't run to the bank. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, let's not run on the bank, folks. Well, at least if you go to the bank, all you can do is a drive through today. Oh, oh really? Oh, oh nice. Know. Yeah, but you got to still touch the buttons. Yeah, that's true. Well, she's okay. eighty. She's doesn't even go into yeah, the bank. Stay home. I mean, there's young people everywhere. They could be happy to. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Believe me, I've been, I've been forcing him to stay home. Like we, we, oh, yeah. we sat in a car while I drove somewhere to go get groceries or something. But yeah. that was all. That was literally just so he could see like how the crowds were. Yeah. Anyway, it is kind of cool, and so I'm going to paint a painting of that. Cool. And and as this week, I'm going to try, try to paint this canvas it's eight by eight it should be easy i'll probably go till midnight yeah i'll take a break in the middle at some point and then i'm going to keep adding canvas and if i have do this again next week i'll add a piece to it until it's about this long very 40 cool. feet wide and then we'll put it on display it somewhere nice we'll fly okay. it from the back of the plane or something yeah so tell me what is the yeah walk through it oh yeah, okay what we're doing. all right this is dallas because right over here is dallas yeah if you look we're to stand here and look dallas is due west that way yeah okay 
So I was going to make it about New York the other day. The first concept, which was in my sketch, was about, okay, it would evolve into New York. But then once we decided to go all the way through and come all the way to the end, uh, I thought, well, I'll save New York until uh, I can ac adequately depict New York. Yeah. Well, right now, I'm going to depict where we're at, which is about right here, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to draw my horses and stuff in here. But they have no idea of the chaos that's going on around them. But mostly today, I'm going to paint a beautiful sunset. And if anybody likes to paint, break out your stuff, get a sketch pad. I'm trying to encourage people to not focus on the drama, the trouble that might be coming down the line. And let's just hang out and paint. This is what I would be doing all day. So uh, I'm going to do it as long as you can. So join me. Ken, you're an artist. I've seen you in paint clothes. When uh, you go home, I want you to get yeah. some Yeah, He's a fiddle player. Yeah, all I can oh, do. Oh, yeah, fiddle player. All I do is... In terms of art, it's just if if Brad tells me where to put paint. Oh well, shoot. Paint this color here. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really did. That was awesome. You didn't even come out there. Most of my clients don't come out there. It was fun. Other than just throw some ideas and stuff. So. But if you guys have any questions for Mr. Mayor, the mayor of a small town, we're not going to get like political, but it is interesting how people respond in you know in times of crisis, especially in a in a rural. I don't know. It's frozen rural yeah, or is it really, more suburban? It's more. It's definitely suburban. Yeah, and really, you'd say kind of suburban urban. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, it used to be rural. Turn yeah. the camera and show them what the. Well, uh, you're so rural here. Yeah. After the show, I want to talk to you about that because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of housing going around. So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, nice. so I'm gonna start painting. I'm just gonna start with the sky. Any and if you get. You want to use my techniques, I've been doing this for my whole life, yeah. okay? So I can do it really fast without even thinking about it. If I start talking, I've got a microphone over here. I'm mostly talking to myself. Okay. Uh, but if you want to comment on that, that's cool too, or ask me questions, ask Ken something. Uh, but I'm going to get to work because this is why I'm here. I'm supposed to be working. Uh, Crystal I Livingston use... says, I still have miniature fruits oh. and veggies from a shadow box that she brought from Randy at her antique shop oh, in no Old Town Brawl. Awesome. That's awesome. I guess you were probably around whenever my mom had the antique store. Yeah, she, yeah. It was only for a few years. But... My wife had a really cool antique store down in Burleson. Yeah. So uh, you guys talk. I'm going to start painting. Uh, All right. What else we got? Uh, Tom Clark, whoever that is, oh, says, my high school friend. Yes. Great, great seeing you, Brad. Thanks for having us. Oh, man, I'm glad. I've never had this many people in my studio. Nina and by that, I mean is the watching. Three of us. This yeah. is about the limit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, right now, it's especially the limit. You know, well, I, I'm going to get to work, so you guys talk, okay? okay. Don't ask me any questions because it's hard to focus on the painting. And, I mean, don't ask me too many. Yeah. Cameron knows. Oh, oh yeah. This. But one thing I am doing, I'm just taking some straight white paint here. Did you get the paint can that I did, that bought you? Yeah, oh yeah, I got okay. it. But this is some white paint, pure white, ultra flat acrylic latex. And I'm going to go in and add the clouds and add the sky because as we all know during the day, the light reflects off the earth and the buildings and everything. So oh, DG's rolling around. Hey, DG. Let's see if I can't get that on. Hold on. Sorry, Bradley. Horse break. Horse break. There's a horse right in the middle. Roll out. Oh, she got up. All right. Back to art. Okay, Occasionally that'll weird. happen. We do get distracted by horses rolling. It just looks so it's good. So, yeah, it's so cool. I mean, uh, Your sister says, Aunt Nina's watching. Oh, nice. Hello, Nina. She's in an uh, adult living facility. Yeah. And uh, what do you call it? Technically, a uh, senior citizen yeah. home. Yeah. And... Uh, my father's aunt, they're up in Michigan watching. Awesome. Nice. Great to see you. Elliot Goodwin. She's an artist, too. We we met her after all these years and realized they had gotten separated. Yeah. And uh, she's been an artist her whole life, a wow. fantastic painter, and we never even knew her until now. That's amazing. Isn't that cool? Just because of the internet, they found us. Yeah, and it's in your DNA. And it turns out yeah, they're both artists. it's in the DNA, yeah. for yeah. sure. So uh, Cameron turned into a filmmaker, so he's out here. This It, it is in the DNA. Yeah. It really is. Elliot, Elliot Goodwin says, good to see you, Brad. I think oh, I've been Elliot. there for 28 years. Elliot, I used to paint. He's the one that owned Larry's Shoes. Larry's right? Shoes? Yeah. We were just talking about Larry's Shoes. Oh, man, I've got all the sketches from Larry's Shoes. I love Larry's I Shoes. I'm going to break that out one of these weeks. Or as as the segment, uh, which if you guys come up with a segment idea, feel free to toss us the idea. But uh, last time we were streaming, 
uh, just to give us a break from the creation stuff, he brought out his old canvases or paintings, p pictures, photographs even of his old old work, and one of them was uh, Larry Shoes. Larry Shoes. Man, we used to do the. You, you used to shop there, yeah, probably, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. And they put coffee bars. This is when sponsored by Larry Shoes. They're yes. not in business oh, yes. anymore, but anytime, any <laughs> minute, I work with those guys again. They were fantastic. They were in business for fifty years, and Elliot took over for his father. But uh, they're no, they're they have some kind of business going on, but. You know, the market changed when everybody could buy every shoes online. Yeah. Because these were elegant shoe stores. They were so cool. You got free uh, free coffee, yeah. elegant shoes, or cheap shoes, and uh, the concept just made people feel good. Yeah. That's what retail used to be about. Yeah. You know, now you just order it online, and it's it's a whole different world. Well, he says he would love to see those. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put them on our show one of these weeks. Hey, Ray says, looking forward to learning a thing or two today. Oh, yeah. My artist aunt, uh, who's recently taken up painting and taken it seriously, owns a uh, health food store over in Mansfield. and uh, She shared the Eterna, Eterna health Eterna. food store. She shared this stream. Uh, ideal sponsor. Come on now. Eterna. Anyway. Not sponsored by Eterna. Sponsored by Thread Tats. Oh, yeah. We are sponsored by Thread Tats and Doggy Digs because people are offering to sponsor uh, us staying at home and doing art every day. Gay Patrick says uh, Mike's dad was a salesman at Larry's Shoes. Oh, yeah. That's right. I've talked to his, uh, Mike about that. That's right. These are all old buddies and family. And well, so the interesting kind of thing is, yeah, we're... I'm, of a different generation than Cameron, probably of you, Ken. I don't yeah. know how old you are. Exactly. 48. 48, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm older than you, so you're still safe and healthy. Yeah, and you're still in the safe zone. Still Although safe. nobody's in the safe zone, but yeah. as far as statistics go, you know. Yeah. And uh, so uh, Cameron's got a whole young generation thing going. He's uh, 30. Do you mind me saying that, Cameron? Uh, yes, I do mind. But oh, you already anyway. did it, and it's live, so we can't <laughs> edit it. <laughs> What? I mean, I'd be proud to say I was 30. I'm 50. What? How old? 58. Anyways, or I'm going to be 58 this year. So, uh, I'm still painting. This Cheryl, that's all that I... It's just because I know how to tie a tie. That's all. And he does... He is Mr. Handsome now. He was living in Austin, and, uh, you know, they had a certain hippie style, so he had to go make it different I'm by sure. wearing a tie to all his meetings and make himself stand out. But uh, so he moved back recently due to making sure I don't wander into town. And uh, yeah, that's true. And so he's cooking for me. He's I'm lucky really I haven't broken out guilty. duct tape yet. But uh, so basically, what I'm doing here is painting just some white where the highlights are going to be. Now, sometimes, especially when you're doing sky stuff, you act, you like to add some like metallic y kind of reflective looking paint in there yeah this is just more of a primer coat because like the other night we got kind of carried away and uh cameron asked me something i said oh yeah what about manufacturing and the next thing i know i've got this in there and it's yeah. a smokestack and i love putting smokestacks in because it's a tribute to the old wpa artists right, you know yeah. and all their work in the post offices yeah. and stuff had to smokestacks because industry was abusing the people according to the yeah. uh people in the depression but anyway, so a little tribute to it's good, and industry's going to play an important part in the corona thing. Yeah, no question. So, so I might just save that. So I have a question for you. Person. Who's your favorite, like, historic muralist? Uh, Thomas Hart Benton, of course. Easy peasy yeah, answer. That's um, mine too. All right. Bubba. Well, I thought maybe when you said the smokestack thing, I thought maybe. Uh, but all of them used it. I mean, yeah. lot, Diego Rivera, They most of the murals at the time, especially... The government was painting. As an artist, you're supposed to paint the time you live in. So right. those mu murals are so beautiful, and that's kind of my concept. Is in big in a big picture, if you look at what you're supposed to do with art, is if you can paint in a town where there's no art museum, and you give people art, and because like I have people still tell me, man, I grew up with these murals, and, and I started getting an interest in art, and I come and work for you. This is when they're trying to make it feel old. Anyway, it's kind of cool like that because it. You can feel the repercussions of putting art in a thing, and now look at the city. It's right. fully the grown. Places, There's art everywhere. Yeah, 
like I said, you know? wasn't didn't historically have a lot of art. Yeah, art. no. Hey, even culture. I mean, even whenever uh, City Market, the old Branson store, they were like, hey, we're we're gonna put a mural here. Like, yeah. it's cool to see just other people starting to come in, so that you foster this kind of yeah, kind of culture. Yeah, I hope that's what I hope is that you know, long after I'm gone, they keep it going. You know? There's room for everybody, is all. That's yeah. All I'm saying. Just so if anybody's inspired. Hire an artist out there to paint a mural. Or Especially can, nowadays, everyone's stuck at home, uh, yeah. kind of realizing how important art is because we're all creating stuff for you guys. But, uh, you know, this would be a good time to have a bunch of artists on the street. Tom Clark, uh, that dog's name is Mr. Turtle. That's so, Turtle. Tom Clark was asking what his name was. All right, Turtle's been with us a long time out here. On Cameron's travels, Cameron is a filmmaker. Makes film and video for uh, all kinds of bands and Christian rock. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. kinds of stuff. Anybody that uh, is really a good person, that's all I really care about. Yeah, he does. Or if he likes your music and stuff, he's he's an especially incredible. if I like the music. But even if I don't, if you're a good person, that's all I care about. <laughs> he can make your band look pretty official, regardless of your skill level. No. He likes working with talent. Speaking people. of music, Andrew is here. He wrote a song. Oh, yeah. Andrew. He didn't write a song last night, but he recorded a song last night for us, and we'll premiere it uh, a little bit later. But uh, I have an idea about Andrew. Andrew is an old friend that uh, we're going to play his song later on when I'm doing the logo, uh, or when I'm taking a break or something. But he wrote this song about the pandemic thing. Yeah. and uh, So we thought about maybe that would encourage other people to write a song and if they want to send it to us maybe we can play it and uh you know so that'll be like it's really cool and when you think about times of disaster or difficulty that is one of the positive things that come out is there are great works of art typically that well yeah. look at the wpa back in yeah. back right During out the of the depression, depression yeah. yeah some of the best art america has ever created yeah. and it was everywhere well, you know, we got kind of spoiled here recently. Uh, there was so much luxury. Everybody's living large. And you, when it, without a little suffering, we've recently suffered by the yeah. situation. Yeah. And, and you know, you, sometimes you gotta uh, like pull down to just the basics, like everybody's doing. Get, get tight, get, yeah. you know, get back to work, do what you do. I paint murals, so I gotta keep painting. Andrew says he thinks he started a, his own watching party with a few Viewing. Oh, like cool! His, his own Facebook page, so that's cool. But no, that's totally true. Um, you know, everyone. This happens in all times of disaster. Yeah. But like one thing that is always, always, every single time something bad happens is just we come together, man. Like, like America, we've been at our throats, at each other's throats. Yeah. It, was, it so felt it's a almost nice like rest. it was at a breaking point. Like yeah. something was gonna happen. I'm not saying that those two things right. are related, but at least this is letting us like, okay, but you don't have a choice. Let's you drop have, it. You don't have a choice. You're gonna have to band together. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, we all talk about patriotism and stuff, and I think real patriotism is understanding and just thinking, okay, well, the government is in a position they hire people every day to handle this. They can handle it. I'm just confident that America's that tough. I've seen the Super Bowl. I've seen the planes fly over yeah. in unison. <laughs> While somebody dances on stage, they know how to do everything. Not comparing a disaster to that, but I'm saying this, let's just Sometimes have faith in what systems we set up. Where it fails, for. people will. Uh, yeah, we do fix big things. It. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if we make a few mistakes, uh, you know, we'll handle it. But we're going to paint and make art, and we've invited a few musicians to Candace come out. Candace is here. Hey, Candace. Hey, Candace. Doggy Digs, one of our sponsors. You know, Doggy Digs, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah, down near South Side, and uh, so I'm going to paint her logo later. So I'm doing marathon here. I would do this anyway. I would stay probably. I would have started earlier. I probably would have started about noon and painted until midnight. So uh, I'm going to start at three today and paint till midnight and see what happens. Question for Ken from um, from your sister, my aunt Dana. Uh, question for Ken: How is Rolson holding up against the virus? Uh, I think pretty good. We're uh, so we just yesterday had our first confirmed case but we do think we've had we think it's probably likely that there you know for a few days have been some folks that have infections around town um, our businesses are are really struggling of course with a, with a, so many having to, to close their doors and so people are hurting just like they are everywhere but um, people are they are definitely holding together and 
I'm really proud that uh, people are following the um, you know the restrictions that our local government is putting in place and the state government's put in place, and they're really banding together. The, like everywhere, there there are people that have been very frustrated, but um, but really people have made it easier. Um, you know, it didn't have to be. Uh, it could have been a lot more difficult to to get these things done, but. Uh, people are heeding the advice uh, as they should. I don't think they're minimizing or dismissing the, the risk. And uh, so I, I'm confident we're going to get through it. And I think people are doing everything they can to really help our local businesses. I know the, the to-go business has really been going really strong. I was just at, a, I, I was at our place, and for the first time ever, our place is open for dinner. Well, open for dinner. They take to-go and yeah. call-ins and pick it up. But uh, they're open until 6 p.m. But I was there... Uh, picking up stuff and they were on the phone just constantly yeah like like to the point where they broke the phones yeah. I don't know if that's true but um, <laughs> but they were so busy Practically, so like yeah. people are people are like uh, they're adapting they're adapting they're yeah. readjusting and you know business folk they they are gonna do whatever they're creative they, you know. as creative as I ever have been you know business people have to stay alive and they got people counting on them uh, but our uh, and our first responders are in great shape so our uh, our fire department was really smart back when um, when the virus hit China. They kind of recognized something unusual was happening. Yeah. And they, oh, really? They, Interesting. They, they ordered some extra supplies at that really? time. Really? So we're, ah, okay. oh, we're, we're, not, we're wow. not struggling like some others are with that. I'm, I mean, I'm sure we'll, you know, depending on how long it goes, we could get there. But um, I mean, Do you want to give props to the fire chief? Yeah, our fire chief is KT Freeman. And... Um, he was, you know, he made some smart decisions that back weeks ago. That's man. That's what we need to do. It, it, it's strange because uh, the things things change are changing so quickly. We are already at like the news cycle by every single day. There was something new to worry about, yeah. but this thing is moving so quickly that you know, a few weeks ago, being prepared is like monumental. Yeah, I mean, it's an hour. It really, it's literally an hour by hour deal, and right. uh, the facts are changing. Uh, all day, every day, so it's been... And I mean, it sounds sounds scary when you're like, oh yeah, the first one was in Burleson or whatever, but Burleson is, like, we have all the restaurants, yeah. we, you know, we have people coming and going and stuff, but I mean, with the projected well, targets, it's it's going to get pretty commonplace that it hits. Yeah, I was, I mean, this sounds weird, um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not glad the virus was in Burleson, but I'm glad we actually had a confirmed case in a way, sure. because I think it, uh, Cause some people that maybe thought, to some degree in the back of your mind, maybe we, you know it's a smaller town, so maybe we're, we're immune. Or and we yeah, knew, yeah. we knew practically speaking, we're not immune. We knew practically speaking that there were people that were infected in the community. Sure. So it, in some ways, it was helpful just to have that confirmed case because it, it really, oh, helped, really, I think helps communicate to folks exactly how serious the situation is and where we are. And so. it can get even for us. I guess I, I'll. Re He's representing the 50s. You're representing the 40s. I'm representing other people. And uh, <laughs> I thought you meant 19th. I was like, wait a minute. No, well, yeah, no, no. I mean that's yes. my fashion sense. But yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but they. Uh, so like, it can be dangerous for all. I mean, it's especially dangerous for people in the older group. But there is a there is. I was reading a story. I'm not going to get into detail or anything. But someone that had a, no underlying. It's a friend of a good friend of one of my friends. Uh, had no underlying issues or anything. She was 32, and it was it's it's she's still going through, but it is miserable. Well, I think the other thing is we don't. It's a novel virus. Right. It's it's a new. So we don't fully know what all the implications right. are. Uh, but I think particularly for young adults, should not feel like they're immune from the effects. That's for sure. And um, but also step up because yeah. we're the we do have our the best defenses. You know, so if. If you have a grandma or something that can't leave the house, make sure she stays in the house and go pick up. The yeah, we all have to do our part. Yeah, 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 mom, let him come to you. Come on. Yeah, absolutely. His his mother is eighty this year. Yeah, and she has a, a condition, so you got to be careful. You know, uh, I've got asthma, so Cameron said that's enough. You know. That's I mean, exactly right. So uh, you're you're ADD enough that. You'd be touching all the surfaces because yeah. shiny. And, yeah. And, uh, oh, there's that's, a new button on here. Listen true. to this. When it talks to me, if I press this button, you know. Oh, well, he's got me over there. We live next door, uh, and uh, he's got me all hooked up where you talk to 
this microphone and it tells you the weather and everything. It's Talk crazy. to the microphone and tells you the weather. He's talking about a Google Home. He talk, talks to, uh, hey Google, you know, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah, so all of a sudden I'm responding to the TV because I sometimes shout at the TV. I don't know why. And Google responds to me. I'm like, that's creepy, man. I don't even know what kind of world Finally, I'm Finally, Brad, in. you're not talking to yourself. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, I spend a lot of time alone over here, so... Yeah. True. That's, That's what true. happens. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so question for Ken. This has nothing to do with um, Corona. Good. Excellent. Um, Thank good. You. Good. This is from Chrissy. Chrissy. Uh, can you help influence Cleburne to grow like Burleson has? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think we all influence one another, and there are. I think there's some really cool things happening in Cleburne. It, I'm. Uh, That's totally true. I'm yeah, jealous of the. You know the the old courthouse square. You mm, can't. That courthouse I mean, is so Yeah, special. we're gonna in Burleson. We're we're creating a plaza, so we're we're sort of creating something that historically we weren't blessed with, right. which is kind of that town. The, you know, square. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. We that's right. Uh, You're like a courthouse. Yeah, no, that's right. You oh, oh, like the the turn of the century Main Street towns. So they you either develop kind of in a linear fashion along the railroad or uh you know in a square around the courthouse or you were so, a watering hole back in real yeah yeah, yeah right. Right. Back in but days, um but. so i see some really cool things happening in cleveland and you know particularly around the square you know it takes a while when you know, to kind of figure out how to reorient so a lot of the court stuff moved over to the the Glen building and but i think like things are starting to happen around there, kind of reorient for and some, to see some new. When did when, when did Burleson build what I call new Old Town? That that extra little section right next to the highway. Oh, so, um, how long has that been there? Because it seems like it's been a minute now. Yeah, it's been a while now. No, it's, I don't know, ten or so years maybe. It's That's a cool looking yeah. development. That used to be where yeah, I used to get my hair cut. Yeah. So the idea is, so we we had, uh, and you know what? Here's what's cool. So um, we brought in a guy. Uh, named Dan Quinto, who uh, is a really creative planner. Mm -hmm. uh, he was involved in the uh, hometown development in North Richmond Hills. So the idea is they build these um, uh, sort of retro, new sort of retro style development. Oh, sure, yeah. And, and yeah. some of that, the retro vintage is, has to do with the architecture, but some yeah. of it has to do with going back to sort of the turn of, turn of the century theory about development and oh, focusing okay. focusing oh, wow. on walkability. Well, Ken, I think we yeah, all know that stuff. it's it's mostly based on my dad's art. That's uh, right. That oh, yeah. His stuff is all retro. No, but so there, that's is, set the, there is a connection there because I'm doing that too. I'm trying, I, in my art, I try to make it as Americana as possible. Yeah. Because I want people to, I'm trying to identify what that yeah. is by being a regional artist. But, uh, you know, without all this European influence, because I haven't yeah. even been to Europe yeah. yet. You know, I've been all over America to almost every state, yeah. but I've never uh, been out of this country. So this is what I know. You know, I'm grabbing elements. Uh, and I get excited about it because wherever you go, there's something cool to paint. You can right. go to anywhere. You can, you know, go out in the pasture and paint, and there's yeah. something cool to paint. But yeah. So many cities have their own story. Cleburne yeah. has a unique story that could be Oh, Cleburne's got told. some amazing stories. It needs stories. to be told, yeah. you know. And some of the buildings, they have a lot of more old buildings than we do. And especially, uh, yes, and uh, a lot of older houses that we don't have, too. So. Yeah. But the cool thing is, so cities, it, you know, we really screwed up development and planning starting in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when, you, when we built the interstate highway system, which is great for so many reasons, but uh, we decided everybody everybody wants to go everywhere in their car, no matter right. how far or how short the trip is. Route 66. Yeah. yeah, so we changed the theory of development to be oriented to the car and not to the person. And we developed all these planning requirements about you know having all these massive uh, parking lots and things. And, it, and, and that theory of development really predominated uh, in, even in, in urban and suburban areas yeah. for, you know, 50 years or so. Yeah, and wow. then, starting in the 2000s, I mean, it started before that, but it really started to get down to cities like Burleson. Right. Starting in the 2000s, we started thinking, well, that's really not the best way to build a community. And and more people were wanting uh, to, to, to live in walkable, bikeable places. And so you started thinking about how buildings and streets oriented to the pedestrian, to the person, right. 
and set it to the automobile. Now, Ken, let me ask you this real yeah. quick. How how many times per day do you get someone yelling at you to put a bowling alley in Burleson? Uh, Cause, a lot. Because <laughs> yeah. I know online, it, 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 that's all everyone, everyone talks yeah. about. <laughs> It is a thing people want that we don't have more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. And we've really? been trying. Oh, I've always I thought, thought that was a yeah. great idea. Yeah, yeah several definitely. years. And I, you know, I al we always think we're getting close, but we, yeah, we've we got some interest now, and so uh, hopefully we'll get there. What will end up happening is someone will build it, and then people will be like, oh, this is awesome, and then it will be like a normal bowling alley where there's like 20 people that go. <laughs> uh, I mean, there, this whole idea of the family entertainment, we got bowling. Oh, no, yeah, totally. And, oh, got two movie days, theaters in Marlson. Who ever yeah, thought that would happen? Yeah. And two Chick Fil As. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're growing, man. This is incredible. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, Tim Hughes. Oh yeah, we Tim used Tim. to teach. It. He was one of Cameron's uh, principals from Vice elementary principal, school. I think, but, uh, where was that? It was. Uh, I guess that was at Kerr. Kerr. No, before, no, before that. Before that. Where'd you go to elementary school? Elementary school, Norwood. Norwood. Yeah. Norwood, one of the old Prince staples. Boy, of Norwood. Norwood. You're a Viking. Yeah. Norwood yeah, Boy. yeah. Wow. I haven't th heard that term in a long time. Yeah. Uh, he says, most good artists are loners, but Brad kind of shatters that stereotype. Amazing. Live oh. art while under the normal. Uh, God bless Mark. Kotsabi? Right? Kostabi. Kostabi? Oh, yeah. He always liked. I feel like I Tim said that. Tim liked Mark Kostabi, who was a famous artist in the 80s. Do you remember who he was? No. He did sort of pop art that was. Uh, it's really cool. He's probably still around. Uh, but he was doing shocking art stuff yeah. that would just make people uh, be like, "Is he really doing that?" Oh, I can't believe he's saying that. You know, yeah. now before outrageous, that was before outrageous became every day. You right, know? right. Uh, so he was cool. You're uh, saying it wasn't outrageous every day in the '80s? Well, not compared to where we're at today. I'm not trying to go negative on you. I mean, but uh, did you see their shoulder pads? The size the, of the yeah, shoulder that's pads true, in that's the eighties? That was pretty crazy. outrageous. You know, but uh, well, you only think it was outrageous because that that was your uh, wheelhouse, right? Yeah. Well, I grew up in the seventies, actually. All right. So well, uh, I mean, he, by the he time was in his prime he, in the eighties. You were your prime grew up in the seventies. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I was in my prime. In Based the on 80s. the stories I've been hearing since I moved back. In, uh oh. Like, so, <laughs> gosh. Well, I've been reminiscing recently, and uh, you know, it's coming up on my fortieth high school reunion. Yes, I know year. because it's coming up on my. 30th. Oh, so. sweet. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Speaking of uh, special anniversaries, Gina's Pizza is celebrating their 50th year this year. Nice. So if Gina's. you're ever in Burleson, Gina's may be one of the oldest businesses in Burleson that's still around. Yeah, 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 Gina told me when she moved her business here, people hadn't eaten pizza before. Like, there were no Italian, Italian restaurants. Wow. So it took her a long time to can people it's not a hamburger it's yeah. a it's crust yeah it's got these and it's incredible pizza she it took is a it pizza. she was from Italy but she had moved Sicily, to even. Sicily yeah and she had moved to Chicago or somewhere and gotten all this experience where the pizza is incredible my nephew came went yeah. over there with us the other day and from he's Chicago. a pizza Zach is a pe everywhere he goes he tests the pizza because he's from Chicago that's yeah. what they do they live it and uh, even he was impressed. And why is it that the dinner salad at uh, Gina's tastes so good too? Because I know, I know there's leaves. nothing to it. <laughs> there's nothing crazy it's, about it, but it's better. Oh, some, I know. Yeah. It's the Burleson. Not sponsored it's, by Gina's. I but think maybe it's my a, heart. I think is, it's their. Well, first of all, they they do the was it mozzarella cheese they put mm -hmm. in. Oh yeah, 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 And then the cream, their creamy Italian dressing. My heart, oh my both God. my heart and my arteries are sponsored by Gina's, just yeah. not this show. Yeah, I uh, I'm supposed to be over there doing a mural for them about Gina, but with this virus, they've got me lock, locked in over here. So yeah. they've got a wall ready for me. They're gathering photographs, so coming soon, a new mural about Gina in Gina's That's restaurant. That's gonna be awesome. Maybe have a like, special party to... Yeah, we, we should, That'd we be really cool. should. That would yeah. be cool. I had my 11th birthday party there, so. That's how special it is to me. Oh, yeah, man. It's the best pizza around. Still is, I think. It really is. And uh, so support them. They actually have started hiring young people. Oh, yeah. That's something that's cool uh, is that um, Gina's, you know, it, it's one of those pizza dives that if you go in there, there's maybe two other people there at any given point, and you're curious how they stay in business, but it's because mostly to-go stuff. It's a pizza place like that, but... 
recently because they've been hiring younger people. Not that the recipe, the recipe has not changed whatsoever, but they're the way they're doing business is a little bit different. Just slightly enough to where they're getting like three or four new customers per day, and uh, more power to them, man. I, that is so cool. Yeah, yeah, you gotta adapt. You know, a lot of businesses uh, pass away when the owner passes away. And, and, and if you can, if you're smart, you take an established business and build it from there because it's already got an established reputation, in my opinion. Yeah. So, Ken, is there anything uh, – I was looking online because uh, I never thought I'd be so loyal to a grocery store, but yeah. both City Market and – oh, no, the horses are running. That's cool. They're running Flipping away from Corona. Yeah. Ken? Hey, that? It was, no, it was too late. It was too late. It was probably turkey out there or something. Anyway, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really loyal to City Market and also HEB. Yeah. And HEB posted this thing. They were like, we got, we're doing this thing for seniors. It was really cool. But you go in the comments and everything's like, well, but there's always so many lines or so. It's what? So, and that's true because people are hoarding stuff irresponsibly. Um, is there anything like the city or government can do to, this is what people are asking yeah. at least, to help with the you know yeah ultimately there is um i think what we're seeing though so far is that the uh, uh the grocery stores have calmed down mm -hmm. right or, or it's not the grocery stores that have calmed down it's that the you know people have calmed down right. they've got their things now yeah yeah and i think they're starting to get like what what things are that we need to be worried about and things that we don't need to be right. worried about right um and and also the our grocery stores have done amazing uh, an amazing job of adapting mm -hmm. So that you know they've changed their hours to give themselves more time to kind the of Dollar General is like the first hour they're up. open. It's only for senior citizens. Yeah. And so and and then they put the limitations on uh, certain products. So I think they've helped a lot, and and that has helped sort of adapt people's behavior about how they're right. doing their grocery shopping. But um, ultimately, yes, there are things that you could do um, if it comes to it. But but so far, I'm you know I've been pleased at the degree to which you know that has calmed down. There's uh, only so far you can take it without getting onto someone's civil liberties as well, like from the government. No, well, I mean that's the that's the tough thing is you get into these situations where you got an emergency or disaster, and um, and the authority of the government kind of expands, and you can do some things that you don't particularly want to. Um, I don't. There's I don't, a fine line. For yeah, sure. and and then the other thing we want to be careful is um, we don't want to do things that cause people to think they have to run to the grocery store. Right. Yeah. So. That was that was something that was interesting for me. I was talking to different people online, and it was like, uh, you know, there's the people that freak out at the beginning, so they hoard all the toilet paper, all the the whatever, and then there's the people that have to respond to that, and they're like, okay, well, because those other people exist, yeah. now I have to go do that because it's all going to be you're right. But it seems like you're right. People are calming down. Yeah. And also, I've heard that I'm not a journalist, so I can say this. Uh, I've heard that uh, just people are telling me that uh, online that uh, there's going to be a surplus soon because all the stores have ordered so much, but all the people have already got all their stuff. So we yeah, we I mean, hopefully at some point the demand has to come back right. down a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And and the thing that I've been told, you know, and um, and we check into these things because mm -hmm. we, I mean, the the supply chain is important to us at the city for, I mean, it, first of all, it's important that everybody has their daily needs right. met. And then second of all, it's important to us that, you know, sort of uh, the responders and others who are responsible for sort of meeting the needs of the community, that, that their supply chain's uh, needs are met. And so, you know, we have checked on these things and there is really not an issue with, um, with having enough goods and supplies there you know the, the only issue that we have is the ability to get them right. from the warehouse to the shelf yeah, i think H -E -B, the H just on that thread hb response responded they said either this week or yesterday they sent out uh 1700 trucks not, not our local that'd be ridiculous but hb as a corporation sent out 1700 trucks wow. to texas just the different yeah. texas ones to of course that could just cover Austin because there's so many in Austin but, um, but yeah so it seems like the one thing that I've noticed in I mean not that tiny tiny Texas towns are always super like friendly anyway yeah but we're being especially courteous right now being like 
oh here you, you go up go right ahead and pass and, yeah. and like yeah, good that's to see you and, oh you yeah. first you lots yeah. lots of you firsts and, yeah there is you know. that's absolutely right yeah and that's good too because people are stressing out you know on the other hand i've gotten a few calls from people like really scared and i'm just listening to what they're saying because those fears are real to a lot of people you know i i think what vice president pence said yesterday when a, a reporter asked him what do you say to people who are afraid and he said, his answer was, don't be afraid, be vigilant. Mm. Yeah, that's And I good. think that's that's actually really smart. Yeah. Um, there is, what we're going through is serious. Uh, it is worrisome. And it's easy to get cynical, too. Yeah. Um, but it is what it, I mean, in some, for a lot of us, it is what it is. And so, you know, what's up to each of us is to be as smart as we can be to protect ourselves and to be, not be part of a, a larger problem, but to be part of a larger solution. Oh and, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and then see. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's as far as sloganism goes. No, but in that context, then see. Okay, well, in 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 my world, in my role, in my neighborhood, my corner, you know, right. what are my the, studio? Yeah, my studio. What are the things I can do to help? And by the way, giving people a little slice of a day that is, hey, think about something beautiful. Think, yeah. You know, think about yeah. something nice. We've got but, such a beautiful day here. Yeah. You can't even believe it. We're well, so blessed. And you know what? We've been saying in the city of Burleson for days, um, you know, like, well, not, we have, we're having to, there's so much we can't do indoors now. Right. And we got to social distance. It's a great time to go outside. That's what we said. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Now listen. And finally, it really is a great day to go yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> room blew me. I, I, just, I joked yesterday, I was like, man, those Apocalypse movies get it right, because it's all rainy and I know, rainy yeah. set. And well, and I kept saying, I'd say, you know, every time we do an official podcast video, I'd say, it's a great time to go outside and enjoy our great parks. So and somebody yeah. in the comments would go, really? Have you have you seen the weather outside? I'm like, oh, yeah. it's going to get nice. Like, you're not wrong. But how does that work <laughs> at the park? You just don't talk to anybody, you keep your own group, you got a rope yeah, six around feet, you. Yeah, keep your six feet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, like, you know, just do this. Yeah, yeah okay. you're good. It's yeah. mostly just don't spit on people. Well, that too. Yeah, is yeah, that? I mean, but too, yeah. touching is is bad too. Touch right? is bad. You know, remember your elbow, elbow thing is cool. Yeah, Crystal yeah. Livingston earlier called me the most eligible bachelor in Texas, and I'm like, right now, I don't know if no. that's a thing. You can't really. <laughs> no, go there's out no and, dating going there's on. No dating. I, happening. Yeah. Oh, well, there is if you're going to the beach. Some people want. Yeah, to it's funny. I hear lots of single people saying, I've been preparing for this social distancing thing for my yeah. whole life. Oh, no, yeah. it's totally Y'all have oh, this that's new funny. generation. No, it's not, you're not wrong. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Especially us artists, yeah. artist types, not so much him because he's a social, social Sam. Um, <laughs> but are you introverts? Or oh, yeah. at the worst. What? Uh, so like, this is the, this is like, I got my video games ready. Yeah. Got, so like, literally life has not changed very much for me because yeah. you know i do music videos and documentaries and you know promo videos which i'm pretty good at yeah uh for a living so like all the businesses are shut down so I'm, this is why we're doing this is because it's like well for all intents and purpose like there's not much has changed for someone like me yeah and yeah. i don't have kids so me like, either this is what know. i'd be doing anyway yeah other than uh the mayor's here and it's kind of yeah. cool <laughs> no listen I, even to make it cooler you know yeah. uh how are our parks? Do they? I mean, how, Fantastic. how is it? Is yeah. So I'll tell. I'll give you some good news. Okay. So um, the the parks are in great shape. Um, you know that, that's the and if you've not taken advantage of Bailey Lake Park and and the bike trails. Oh, like that the, the, Bailey Lake the, Park is beautiful. It's beautiful. And then the bike trails, uh, the mountain bike trails behind Chisholm Hall Park are awesome. You're going to get really muddy now, but hey. Hey, somebody, man, that's half the somebody sent me a message the other day. So they, they took their kid mountain bike riding. Uh, and uh, Sean Murphy, who's the band director at uh, Centennial High School, just sent me a text message. Said he, he just got back from them taking his, uh, one of his boys to ride ride uh, mountain bike. Said he hasn't been that muddy in about you know, 20 years. Yeah. But, uh, but it was a great day. There's so. a bunch of, like, like for me, it's always easy to get cynical about, you know, the way how much money influences America and corporations and yeah. everything he's yelling at everybody but man everybody like top to bottom is stepping up to the plate these yeah. days like I know a bunch of my friends um, like that work in malls or something that obviously can't be open they're getting paid sick leave oh well, yeah sick corporations leave or, are coming or, like, through like they're all coming together like there's so many um, I was just looking up because my dad loves football um, I, I was really just looking do. up how to I was like well 
there's no sports happening right now either. Maybe I could watch some old games that I yeah. haven't seen or something, yeah. or show him just for some sort of sense of normalcy. And the only way you could do that is with NFL Game Pass, which is yeah. like a subscription yeah. service, yeah. but it's totally free that's awesome. until May. So like, there's different ways to entertain ourselves, and that's why there's everybody and their dog is live streaming right now. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, well, you know, it's it's everybody's stuck at home, so we got to keep busy. So yeah. uh, keep ourselves. Yeah, hey, I got about five minutes. Oh, now, you're fine. So uh, okay, so there's so, uh, one or two more questions. Yeah. Uh, Ken, Gray, uh, Kathy Smith says, uh, has the date for the city election changed? Read that it might change. Uh, so to November. here's. Uh, so because I'm on the ballot, uh, I'm really taking a very hands-off approach to the to the May election. Oh, okay. Makes sense, yeah. uh, but I, what I can say is this: is that the governor um, has given cities permission to move their uh, May elections to November, and al almost every city I know of, as they are meeting, they are making the decision to do that. I think most people are saying. Um, they don't know how we could have an election right now because early voting yeah. would start in about three weeks. Right. Well, not and, only that, uh, everyone's just so stressed. Well, that they and you also think that most and... of the people that, that work the polls are in their 60s or 70s. Right, yeah. So it just makes it logistically very difficult. Um, and then I also know uh, every day I'm on a call with all of the mayors in Tarrant County, That's the county right. judge, and there has been a lot of discussion about um, wanting, looking for, trying to get the governor to give us alternative dates because they don't want to wait all the way till November. Uh, the governor yesterday moved the primary, uh, which was going to happen at the end of May, mm -hmm. to July sixth. July. Oh, and wow. so I think so. Some cities are uh, asking the governor to let us consider that date as well. So the answer is I don't know, and you won't hear me um, advocate for any particular solution. I'm going to leave that to. Right. Uh, the rest of my council members who are not on uh, on the ballot, but um, yeah, that's a good way to do yeah, it. Yeah, so to be safe. so the possibilities are it could it could go on in May. Um, most election officials are telling us they don't they don't know how they could accomplish that and give everybody sort of fair access to the ballot. So I don't think it's going to happen. Um, Especially we we still don't have a handle on how why well, we don't we don't know how long this is going to play out. Let, but, let me ask about the big picture yeah. of the election. Yeah. Now, uh, being a mayor is kind of trendy, and uh, I'm sure you've talked to Mayor Pete. I have not talked to Mayor Pete, actually. But uh, this but is he's, he's got such dreamy eyes. How could you <laughs> yeah, resist? I mean, you're on the phone with the mayor. Get Mayor Pete on there. I, see. Uh, I will say, Mayor Pete, I loved part of his message because he said something that we have been saying in Burleson for uh, about five years now, um, and that is just the importance of belonging. Mm -hmm. And giving people a place to belong. That's right. And so if you've uh, if you've heard me speak at all in the last five years, you have heard me say that one of the most important things we can do is make Burleson a place to belong for well, everybody. It sounds like yeah. you had, uh, yeah. at least one presidential candidate listen to you because uh, he I, sounds you know, like he stole your stick. I think part of it is is that he's a mayor. Yeah. And yeah, you, mayors are responsible mayor, for the people. Well, and you get that. If, I mean, to me, that's the if it's the best thing you can be as a city. Is a place where people feel like they belong. Yeah, so, that's true too. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what Burleson. So if we if it ends up pushing to November, November is going to be a busy season politically. Yeah, yeah I don't know how that's, that's going to work. Yeah, out. so that's I, I think crazy. there's a, another possibility would be July, but right, right now that's there's not no an option. But it could be you know in the next few days. I think the governor could add that as a possible yeah. thing. Because then, and I will. So one of the things that the uh, Betsy Price in Fort Worth said today, uh, they have. On the May ballot, they had scheduled a. Uh, their, they have something called the Crime Control uh, CCPD, Crime Control and Policing District, I think. So uh, they have a half cent sales tax hmm. revenue that goes toward funding public safety. Oh, okay. And it has to be renewed every five years, I think it is. And so it was on the ballot to be renewed oh, in man. May. It expires automatically in August if it is not renewed in election before then. Mm. So, oh, they're going to so have to do something. So what Mayor Price said is they do not think it's feasible in Fort Worth to hold an election in May, but they also cannot wait until November to have it because their CCPD would expire. And, and in Fort Worth, they have a lot of their uh, uh, police law enforcement function is funded through that CCPD. Oh, geez. So it would, it's not something they can just figure out overnight. There's would, all these yeah. 
things, things that, you don't behind even the think scenes about. that you don't even realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah but y'all yeah. will figure it out. Y'all are smart you have folks. To. You I mean, and whatever together. it is. I mean, sometimes there's not a good answer or a good solution, and then you just got to work through all... Everyone thought the Iowa, things. like, doing it on your phone, that that would be a, such a simple solution. Turns out not that was... So much, not so, so easy. Uh, I, what about just mailing it in? Yeah, who thinks... Uh, who I want to mail it in. Yeah, I think, you know, ultimately, I think... And there, that has been something that was talked about. A lot of people said one of the governor's office just to say, just let everybody vote by mail. Problem is, you can't. You could do that, but you can't ramp up for it really quickly. Right. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. we don't even, uh, we don't have enough ballots to to mail to everybody. I mean, you could do that, but even the the vote by mail is very cumbersome. So every ballot that goes in, it has to be like it's stuffed in parts. You know, oh, and, it, yeah, and it, right. it has to be done very technically. Oh, yeah. And then when they open it and count it, it's like it is a very cumbersome. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so and even imagine, to do that, how you can do that in rubber gloves. Even imagine right, the yeah. paper cuts. I mean, <laughs> well, you got the rubber gloves. Yeah. I mean, it could be. And I, so I think here's what I think is ultimately, ultimately someday we'll be voting online, right? Right. Hopefully, yes. Someday, but Once I think they figure it out. I think the next step is we go to much more significant vote by mail right now in a local election the only people that can vote by mail are people who are 65 or older uh people who are disabled people uh who can prove that they're going to be out of town on election day or people who are in jail but not finally convicted of a felony oh, we're, oh yeah 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 so oh, so i think the first thing that's one of the next things that'll happen is we'll open. This teaches us a lesson, right? Yeah, right. I think we we probably will be opening up voting by mail to a lot more people. That would be my guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. yeah that, I, mean, I think that seems. And safer. then at some point we're like, well, let's just all vote by mail. Yeah. I know. I mean, there's some I states understand. where they're I think doing that now. So. I mean, it makes it a lot easier, especially yeah. you know when it's polling day. You know, some people are getting off work. And yeah. Then, yeah. Now I will tell you, uh, the. All the things you have to do to mail in your ballot and like to get it right, it's actually easier just to go in and oh, vote. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but can they set a huge like to go line on a service road? Yeah. Of where you just go <laughs> hand your ballot in and you're in your car. At some point, yeah. And drop I mean, it in a box. You cannot do that. You could not do that today. Uh, uh, that'd it, be kind of cool. Yeah, it's not. It's not possible given all the other. If you want possible. ideas, go to this yeah. guy. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually all right. I'm cheating because I'm going to put that here on this highway in this painting. Yeah, there's got to be a big. The, the boat thing is going here. Her, this is eat to go. Yeah. I'm going to put a girl here serving food right on the highway. So like, we did, there's nobody on the highway. So not why not just have your to go line or your voting line. Yeah. Just go on the highway, build a big truck. Can you add a there. vote to go into your vote to go somewhere? now? Yeah. See, this is why he's here. Oh, I've got, I drone. need more ideas. Yeah, I don't yeah. have enough ideas. Can yeah, you don't have enough ideas. But I'm, I do need more ideas, so feel free to send them All to right. me. And anybody watching, like my page and send them to me. Yeah, well, Ken, I know you got to get I out of here. You got to go, um, I'm going to help you. Thanks, everyone, for asking. Thanks for questions. having me. Oh, yeah. thank you. Here we go. Now talk to Kelly Clarkson about coming over, okay? All right, I'll do yeah, it. she's right. our guest for next yeah. week. All right, we do you need all. some music over here. Be careful pulling out. Oh, here, I'll go. Uh, Brad, why don't you talk to them? I'll go watch the road for them. Okay. okay.